showtime! Obrigado. De nada. Obrigado. Like, subscribe, and share the video. All right. What's up, world? It's your boss, International Zone, here in Rio de Janeiro, Copacabana Beach. I'm with Dennis John Pierre, DJP. D DJP? DJ. I like the way you got the logo like DJI, <laughs> DJP. That was, that was fly. I was like, Just look at this motherfucker. <laughs> so if you don't know, I'll put a link in uh, the description of this video. We're not going to talk about where he came from and all that stuff. We did that already. This is a follow-up. Now, I think I've known Dennis now for about two years. Has it been two years? About, yeah, three, about three years. Three years. Three years yeah. Time flies, yeah. right? So we did that video already, and um, I would call uh, Dennis more of a Brazil specialist. Like, some guys travel, travel, travel around the world, and some guys find a place, and they focus most of their energy on that place. Would you, would you agree? Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, some, some guys, they, they travel to a place, they love it, and they keep coming back, keep coming back. Right. Um, I was the same way with Rio, but it got to a point where I got tired of Rio, where I'm like, okay, I want to see something different. Right. So that's what happened. That's why I started venturing out. Right. Where else have you been outside of Brazil? I've been to Colombia once. I've been to Canada. Uh, I've been to Portugal. And I've been to Cape Verde. Cape Verde. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Dennis speaks humbly. He's like, well, he speaks of Portuguese pretty good. <laughs> um, nice <and> nice. <laughs> and how long did you study the language? And what inspired you to study? I, well, I kind of know what inspired you to study. But how long did you study the language to get to this point? And what was your tools that you used? Well, to be honest, I'm still studying. <laughs> I never stop. I, st I, st I still study every day. Right. Uh, what inspired me to learn the language is when I first came here, I didn't know anything. I went to a, a pharmacy right here in Copacabana. I was talking to a, a pharmacist or a cashier, and she became frustrated with me because I couldn't speak the language. She looked me in my face and she said, can you speak Portuguese? And I said, no. She said, oh. she rolled her eyes and walked off. And because of that, I felt stupid. Right. And so I said to myself, I'm gonna dominate, I'm gonna learn this language, I'm gonna master this language. Cause I didn't like that. I didn't like, you know, the right. feeling that gave me. Right. So that's what spurred me to, 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 to stick with it. And that was how many years ago when you that started? Was, that was almost 11 years ago. Shit. <laughs> okay. I catch a lot of flack from people when I'm in Colombia. Uh -huh. When I'm here. Oh man, you should know the language by now. Mm -hmm. Right. One is everybody got their own different learning curve. Mm -hmm. Some people do pick up a language in a year or two. Mm -hmm. Me, it's been very difficult to pick up language. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a memory thing or what. Mm -hmm. But language has been very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. But to hear you say that you've been studying for 11 years, mm -hmm. What would you say is, a, in your opinion, the average amount of time that it might take for someone to like kind of really pick up on the language? Well, number one, number one, you have to have passion for it. You have to have passion for the language you're trying to learn. If you don't have passion for it, when the going gets tough, you're not going to stick with it. So that's number one. Number two, you have to be consistent. Like, I spend 20 minutes every day practicing my Portuguese. Some people spend more. Some people spend more hours per day. If you spend more time immersed in the language, you'll learn faster. For example, when I first came here, I made the mistake of learning through writing and reading only instead of through listening. So when I got here, I struggled. So now I'm learning more through listening and it's, it'll, it'll, it'll bring you along a lot faster. Right. So right now I'm, I walk about an hour and a half every day. Mm -hmm. To walk five miles takes me about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And in that hour and a half, I'm usually listening to Portuguese on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I am listening. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm doing like an hour, at least an hour a day. Okay. I went to the school, Falai, 
because mm -hmm. part of me getting my uh, student visa, I went to the school. I went to the first day, but everybody in the class was speaking Portuguese already. Mm -hmm. I felt like a fish out of water. Mm -hmm. So I said, and I'm leaving, so I said, when I come back, I'll start the school all over when they got a new class, fresh class. I need people kind of on my level because I kind of felt bad in the class because everybody was pretty much speaking. He, he did tell me, we don't have a class at your stage right now, but you can come in. So I, I believe I'm going to continue to walk. I'm going to continue to listen, whether I listen at night before I go to sleep or listen when I walk. I'm going to continue to listen for our day. Um, yes, I have picked up some um, words, mm -hmm. but like complete sentences and complete thoughts, is, I'm still struggling with. But I know that I just, I, I would think that, yeah, I would know more Spanish by now, but can I say, did I really put in the work? No, mm -hmm. but I just felt like I would should pick up, and I know I haven't picked it up, like most people might have picked it up, mm -hmm. even if not trying, if they're not trying. But I'm invested in Brazil, so. Right. My Portuguese is going to come before my Espanol, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So, moving on. What was, what was your first time that you visited uh, Brazil? My first visit was in August of 2013. That was quite some, that was over 10 years, 11 over years ago. Over 10 years, yeah. Okay. And um, who, in, who or what inspired you to come to Brazil in particular? And was that your first time out of the country? Uh, no. I had been to Canada. Well, Canada, that's, I don't really count Canada, but so for all intents and purposes, yeah, it was my first time out of the country. Uh, what inspired me, a friend of a friend lived here, and he was telling me about it, and it kind of piqued my interest a little bit, but it wasn't until I saw Al Grease's documentary, Frustrated, that's what pushed me off the fence. Right. So that's what that's what brought me here. I saw that some somewhere along the lines, even when I wasn't interested in Brazil, uh -huh. and I, I still came upon that video, you know, because the clip, clips were cut up and put on YouTube. Uh -huh. And I, even though that's not what inspired me, I did see it uh -huh. and I did hear the story. Um, now, there's like 26 states uh -huh. in Brazil uh -huh. and there's like over 5,000 municipalities uh -huh. and cities that I can't, like 22 cities or something like that. Uh -huh. You've been coming to Rio enough. You started venturing out mm -hmm. in the last few visits here, right? Yes. So how many uh, states have you been to up to this point? I don't know the state count, but I've been to 16 cities. 16 cities? Yeah, including Rio. Um, any standouts, your cities, standouts? Uh, well, the first one that stands out is Manaus, which is in the Amazon region of Brazil. And it's just, it's a huge city of two million people in the middle of a jungle, <laughs> surrounded by hundreds of miles of jungle. And it's very unique culture, very unique, unique people. And uh, I enjoy it. I still, I still go back there from right. time to time. Um, what are your maybe top five cities? Top five cities? Yeah. Uh, Manaus, Fortaleza, Jean Pessoa, uh, Balneario Camboriú, which some people refer to as the Dubai of Brazil. It's a very advanced city. Uh, it's, it's a safer, cleaner, more compact version of Rio de Janeiro. Okay. And, uh, okay. just scoop in there. Just scoop in. Estou fazendo vídeo. Estou tirando vídeo. Uh, Balneário Camboriú, Maceió, which I just visited. And, uh, Pipa Beach. Pipa. <laughs> Pipa Beach, yeah. What city is that in? It's between Natal and Jao Pessoa. It's a small beach town, uh, very touristy. It was, it was, it was, I was surprised. It was surprised. very, very good, yeah. How different are the cultures, I guess, in different cities? Uh, are they very different or? Yes. Okay. For example, here in Rio is beach and fitness culture. In Manaus, it's river culture and indigenous culture. So when you're flying into Manaus, you can see these houses along the river. And the only way you can access these houses is through boat. And these people are called Ribeirinhos. River people. Ribeir like yes, exactly. So when you get there, you know, it, Manaus has a strong indigenous culture. So you see people with this indigenous look. 
you see indigenous, you know, you know, paintings and things throughout the city. So it's totally different. It's totally different. It, there's two, uh, like two or three sisters that have a big YouTube channel. It, it like blew up, mm -hmm. and they're they're like uh, the Amazonian chicks, and they got a. You, you never seen their channel? No. I gotta send it to you. They like blew up. Somebody gave them a, 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 a GoPro, uh -huh. and they you see them fishing and climbing trees yes. and like straight and they their channel's blown up of course they're attractive they're mm -hmm. brown skin right but um and i was just telling some guys the other day like people didn't know about them but somehow i stumbled upon their channel and mm -hmm. it's that amazon culture that they're yes. showing on their yes. channel and they got a lot i'm sure they got a lot of views because they're beautiful but right. they got a lot of views and you could see how different they are from the people here like this yes. is like city people you know yes. what i mean yes big city people yes um I wrote down some questions too. <laughs> the northern um, part of the country is considered the country, the countryer part right. of Brazil. The north. So, yeah. Okay. Question: um, Do you feel like uh, some cities, and if you don't mind mentioning them, mm -hmm. that you could have skipped over visiting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna offend some Brazilians that may be watching this, but I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm speaking the truth. Your opinion. I'm just. I'm just, I'm just speaking my opinion. Right. Uh, Goiânia. Goiânia is a city about two hours from the capital, Brasilia. It's out in the in the, the middle of the country. Nice people, wonderful people, but there's really not much to do there. Um, what's another one? That, that that one sticks out the most. Right. That was the uh, Belo Horizonte. Is nice. It's a big city, about maybe an hour flight north of here. Uh, it's like a smaller version of Sao Paulo. It's just all skyscrapers. Very nice people. Some of the nicest people in Brazil you want to meet. The only problem is there's no beach. <laughs> there's no beach, so it's just bars and restaurants. So if you're a beach person like me, that just won't do. <laughs> cool. Respectfully. <laughs> um, How important uh, was it for you to know the language to travel around Brazil? Very important. Um, as a matter of fact, I didn't feel comfortable venturing out to other cities until I felt my Portuguese was strong enough. Once I felt my Portuguese was strong enough, then I started going to different cities and to get the full effect of you know what each city has to offer. And in each city, do they have a different like uh, accent? Yeah, absolutely. Inflection of the of the language. Absolutely. Where like you could like okay in America you got people from the south. Yeah. Somebody from New York be like, huh? What you say? Yeah. You know? Is, yeah. it, is it like that? It is like too? that. For example, people in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is a big city. Big city. When they talk, they're called palistas. When they talk, I can understand like eighty to ninety percent of what they say. Yeah. But people from the northeast. I have, I have struggles with it. I just came from Natal, which is in the northeastern part of Brazil. I was having a very hard time with the accent. I was, I was saying, huh? Huh? A lot oh, yeah. up there. And it's similar to, even though I don't know a lot of Spanish, but when uh, the Apaisas speak Spanish, I mm -hmm. can understand more than a Costanian. Oh, yeah? You know, it's the same, like, it's mm -hmm. like people from the Caribbean, yes. how they have the Patois. Patois yeah. It's like, they speak in English, but you like it's broken English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it, it's it's interesting. Yeah. Um, which cities that you visited do you think they speak the most English? Aside from here, yeah. Maybe Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, because it's an international the, city. The two biggest yeah, cities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Are you dating? Do you have a girlfriend? I do. In Brazil? I do. Okay. Here. Here. <laughs> um, how important do you think it was for you knowing the language to seal the deal? 100% because she speaks no English. No English. At all. <laughs> so I, that's why I'm having a hard time. <laughs> but, well, it's like this. You, you just have to be consistent with it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Just be consistent. Just learn little by little. Don't try to learn too much mm -hmm. too fast because there are some things you're going to learn here that you're not going to learn in a book or on an app. There's some things you can only learn on the street. There's two Portugueses. There's the Portuguese of books, apps, newspapers, magazines. 
Then there's the Portuguese of the people, the Portuguese of the street, right. which is going to trip you up if you're not used to it. So Like Ebonics. Just, exactly. Slang. It's, it's like hard. Like Vallejo, Vallejo. Exactly. Vallejo, Vallejo. You ain't going to never see that. You don't see that. I've never heard that on none of the, uh, you, the videos I watch. I learned a, no, a new slang term in the Northeast that they use up there. Osh. 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 It's similar it's to like, that. It's like... It's like some kind of exclamation. It's kind of okay. like an expression right. showing surprise or right. like, oh, <laughs> But they don't say that here. Right. Yeah. Um, could you see yourself eventually living here? Absolutely. And if so, what would be your strategy to stay? Well, right now I'm in the process of getting uh, my green card because right now the goal is to to live here six months out of the year i don't feel i feel content just being here six months i don't need i don't feel the need to be here the entire year because i have family back in the states and i'm not ready to leave them permanently yet right and also when i leave this place and come back i appreciate it more right. so right now half the year is cool with right. me at this point right. um could you see yourself marrying a Brazilian? Absolutely. If, if I ever get married, my wife will be Brazilian. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Nice. <laughs> He's straight about that. Um, Man, there's no doubt. <laughs> so, would you have children? Would you have children? Yes. Would you, yes. Okay. Because yes. you do you have any? You don't have any now. Uh, what would you say is the biggest or the most similarities, if there are any, between Brazilian women and American women. Similarities? Yeah. And and differences. What would you say are the similarities and differences? Similarities, I mean, in, in general, women are women. They pretty much respond to the same things. Right. Uh, most women want a guy that can provide and protect. I mean, that's, that's universal right. throughout the entire planet. Mm -hmm. Differences, I feel, uh, I find that Brazilian women are generally more affectionate. Uh, more feminine. I'm speaking in general terms here. I'm not saying every Brazilian girl is like this, but in general terms. Uh, if they're interested, they have no problem showing it. Whereas in America, it can be difficult sometimes. They can play a little game. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, those are the main differences yeah. to me. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. From the what I know, I agree. Yeah. Um... What are the biggest similarities and differences in the people in general, like in the culture here or in the culture in America? Well, number one, and I tell this to Brazilians all the time, Brazil in general is more socially open. It's easier to make friends here. As a matter of fact, I have more friends here in Brazil than I have in the United States. Uh, the people are generally more welcoming, okay? Um, that's the biggest difference between the social climate here in that in the states. America has more money, more things, more opportunities, but here in Brazil, I think it's socially superior. Okay. Is there anything that you think uh, is similar, like similarities between like, Brazil and United like States? Like I feel like Brazil, in some ways, is heading in the direction of the way people move and operate in America, like. They have a feminist movement now. Yes. They have a big uh, movement of protecting mm -hmm. uh, the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. um, they got child support here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, what do you? How do you feel about that? Like, what did you notice anything that that is similar? I mean, it's some similarities, but Brazil has a very strong culture. It's a very strong culture. It's still, by and large, a patriarchal society. Okay, it's still a patriarchal society. The feminism in Brazil is not to the extent that it is in the United States because in order for feminism to thrive, you have to have the media and the judicial system to back you up. And Brazil hasn't reached that point yet. I'm not saying that it won't or it will, but it hasn't reached that point yet. Right. Um, let me see what else. Uh, s sustainability. You're here, you want to be here six months out of the year, mm -hmm. 
you're already here mm-hmm. a decent amount, like yeah. maybe four months. I'm, I'm here, here five months, right? Close to six months. So I'm how here. are you uh, able to sustain yourself to be here like that? Because a lot of people ask me that question over and over. How do you travel? How do you do this? Mm-hmm. And I know they're curious because they wanna they wanna do it too. Mm-hmm. You know, we inspire people. Mm-hmm. So what would you say? I would say. You have to find a way to have your money make money for you instead of you working for it. My way of doing it, I do affiliate marketing, which is basically I promote other people's products and services online for a commission. So basically I send visitors to different e-commerce sites and when that visitor buys something, I earn a commission for it. So at this point I pretty much mastered that to the point where I'm able to, I don't have to work if I don't have to. I can just sit back and the money comes in. So that's the that's the main thing. You have to find a way to make money where you don't have to show up somewhere to earn it. That's key in order to live the lifestyle that we live. What is you've been around to about 22 cities, you said 16, 16. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite city and why? Okay. Rio de Janeiro is number one. Been in 16 cities. Rio de Janeiro is number one because Rio has everything. It has the energy. It's got beaches, beautiful people great food, uh, the weather's great, it has it all. Other cities just don't have the energy that this place has, okay? A lot of guys like Salvador, some people like Sao Paulo, but Rio, Rio has it all. It's got it all, it's magical. They don't, they don't call it the, 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 the marvelous city for nothing. <laughs> right, uh, John Thompson told me the same thing. He yeah. said that he'd been around Brazil, he said, but ain't no place ain't like Ain't no place Rio. like Rio, man. That's what he said. Ain't no place like Rio. Yeah. Um, what else did I want to ask you? Your channel. How has it um, changed you? you How has it changed me? Yeah. Um, Sharing that information, that, you know, people approaching you, people calling you for advice. Like, how has that changed over the years? for you how has it changed me yeah well i'm a lot more comfortable in front of a camera Uh, i never thought i would become a youtuber ever um i said if i was gonna become a youtuber it would be talking about something i love and i love brazil so i said why not right uh and also it's made me a lot more comfortable approaching people and talking to people i mean i've become you become accustomed to approach people in the street, ask them for interviews. Yeah. You know, your confidence will grow. Um, uh, you become you become some somewhat of an inspiration to a lot of people because people see you, they say, "Hey, this guy's doing it. I can do it too." Yeah. So, and I'm nobody. You know, I'm just a regular guy. Yeah. I'm just a regular guy who likes to have fun like everybody else. Yeah. But uh, if if anybody's watching this, whoever's watching this right now, if you can do it, I can do it too. I'm not a special guy. If you can do it, put the work in, you can have it. You can do the same thing that we're doing right now. Yeah, Yeah. and a lot of guys, um, I'm sure you experience this, especially Mm -hmm. here, Mm -hmm. when people run into you. Mm -hmm. They literally say, hey man, you are the reason that I am here. Yes. And keep doing what you're doing. Yes. Keep doing the great work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And definitely would like to say thank you to the people I meet because I met a lot of guys from London this this trip that were like, yo, man, mm-hmm. like your videos, keep doing it, mm-hmm. which is surprising. You know, you expect to meet a lot of people from the United States. Yeah. But this trip has been a lot of guys from London yeah. here. And I noticed this is a place that guys from London been coming. You know, yeah. they come here. Um, what advice might you have for someone who's interested in coming? Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you say? Advice for them? Maybe things that they should or shouldn't do to, when they're on their first trip here. Well, I made a video entitled How to Touch Down in Brazil a couple years ago. Okay. It answers a lot of questions that a lot of guys have or a lot of people have before they come here. Right. Um, one of the things I would advise is to, if you're coming to Brazil, I advise coming to Rio first because it's more tourist friendly. It's more plug and play, so to speak. Uh, it caters more to American tourists, more English is spoken here. So I advise starting in Rio first and branching out later. Now, some people, they go to other cities first, but for new travelers, I advise coming here first. Uh, if you 
if you can sign up for a tour package, do so. Do all the touristy stuff first. Yeah. Uh, stay here at least 10 days. Because <laughs> you're going to spend one day traveling, getting here and one day going back. So spend at least 10 days just to, to, to experience everything you, you need to experience. Yeah. But if you can't mm -hmm. do 10 days, still come. Because yeah. my first time here, uh -huh. it was seven days. Mm -hmm. And it was enough to, to make me say, this is one of my favorite places in yeah. the world. <laughs> and what, and what, what made it one of your favorite places? I think the number one thing is that there's black people here. You know, like, I could walk around here and not feel like I'm a foreigner. Like, exactly. I might stick out. Sometimes you get uh, overlooked as a karaoke. Not mm -hmm. often, but sometimes you do. Yeah. But I feel so comfortable knowing that there's people of color here, mm -hmm. and I feel very comfortable. You're not stared at here. You're not isolated. No, no, no one's going to stare at you from being a black man here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there's places in, uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that's over the whole country, mm -hmm. but here in Rio, there's a lot of people that look like you here in Rio. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, I think that's number one. Mm -hmm. Two, it's a metropolitan city where you could get most of your accoutrements mm -hmm. and many beaches, yes. a lot of water. Yes. Like, you, like that's like a little bit of just life, you know what I mean? Like, yes. you could walk and see the water. Whether you get in or not, you could feel the water, you could hear the water, mm -hmm. you could see, you could smell the water, you know what I mean? So, like, it, <laughs> like on days here where I'm stuck, I'm sitting in the house, the weather's nice, I got not, nothing else planned. I'll come to the beach because you never know who you're gonna meet here. You never knew. That's the that's another thing I love about Rio. You never knew. Who, you never know who you're gonna meet. It's a it's a, a whirlwind of good times, chance encounters, and just you know, it, it's just a great time overall, man. It's just you gotta you gotta see it at least once. So, you want to plug your channel or mm -hmm. may, and maybe plug anything that they should be looking forward you got coming up. Uh, my channel is titled BJP, and uh, I drop a, a new video pretty much every once every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of traveling within the country recently, so it's some interesting stuff to, to look at, you know, outside of Rio, outside of Brazil. Because not a lot of people, when most Americans or most foreigners think Brazil, they think only Rio de Janeiro. But Brazil is a big, diverse country. You'd be surprised what the rest of the country has to offer. So. Make sure you check it out. DJP. Peach. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> nice. Uh -huh. Like, subscribe, and share the video. Thanks. Are you not entertained?